we begin this review, I should give some context as to what we'll be discussing today. There is a rather well-known member of the animation review community known as the Mysterious Mr. Enter. Mr. Enter's analysis of animation has been very divisive. This is mainly due to his very cynical views on cartoons. He has a very low tolerance when it comes to cartoons, and a lot of people don't like it when he judges cartoons with such high standards. I, on the other hand, do enjoy his reviews. I don't mind his cynical views on cartoons as it adds a different perspective from all the other cartoon reviewers. His scripts are well written and he often goes into a deep analysis of certain aspects of a cartoon that most other reviews would have overlooked. To be honest, Mr. Enter is one of the big inspirations for my channel back when I first started in 2016. Though I have a much higher tolerance for cartoons, which means that our views on cartoons aren't exactly in sync. Despite this, I have never felt the need to call out one of his videos. Even when he harshly judges cartoons I'm fond of, I felt that they were a fair analysis of those cartoons. And even though our opinions differ, he still made valid points in his arguments. My gym partner's a monkey on the other hand, is where I felt I needed to step in. I had already planned on reviewing this series before his video came out, but a big problem I had was trying to think about how to tackle the topic. There wasn't really anything special I wanted to say about the show. In fact, I hadn't even seen the show since it last aired in the mid-2000s. That wasn't until I watched the Mr. Enter review, and he said this one line. Although, me remembering it more fondly uh, doesn't surprise me. A lot of people remember the show fondly. Now, I'm not one for nostalgia blindness, so when he said that in his review, it had me worried. I went ahead and rewatched one of the only episodes of the show I remembered, and it made me realize something about the show that Mr. Enter missed in his review. Mr. Enter focused his review around the episode called The A Word. In this episode, the main character Adam calls the school bully an ape, which is portrayed as being a slur to Jake. Mr. Enter heavily critiques this episode for portraying Jake as the amoral victim, while Jake is actually a jerk character for most of the show. While that is a fair point to make, it actually made me realize the point of the show, or rather an element in the show's writing that it pulls off so well. This show does an amazing job at subverting expectations. Mr. Enter points out that the show's plot seems random, which I feel is the point of its writing. While some episodes have predictable setups, they always try to find ways to subvert your expectations of how the plot unfolds. The reason Jake is treated as the victim in this episode is to subvert your expectations of how it will end. You may expect the episode to end with Jake forgiving Adam for what he called him, or maybe Jake would call Adam a slur and both characters would realize how much words hurt and they would forgive each other then. But no. The episode ends with the reveal that Ape was actually a compliment, and Jake was upset at Adam for calling the school bully an ape and not him. With how the episode built Jake up as the victim, you wouldn't have expected the word to have been a compliment. Mr. Enter points out what he feels like is a plot hole in the episode. Speaking of that, it's amazing how there are plot holes in this 11 minute episode. One zebra kid gives Jake a shirt from his favorite musical artist, and Jake seems to really appreciate it. In the very next scene, Jake doesn't know if he's ever going to find that best friend who really gets him. These scenes are literally back to back. Well, this again subverts your expectations of where the plot would go from there. He does still has some valid points of the quality of the series, although I feel the subversion as an interesting element to the show. To further prove my point, let's take a look at one of the only episodes of the show I remembered, Shark Attack. This episode starts off with Adam playing the role of the prey in a stalking class. This is an obvious setup for the topic of this episode, which is bullying. In fact, after this scene, Adam goes on to say that he wants a turn at being the predator. This gets tested as the school bully targets Adam as his new victim since the old one went to a different school. Instead of standing up to the bully as you would expect, Adam just hands over his lunch. The next few days have Adam hiding in various spots to eat his lunch, but to no prevail. Even after all of that, Adam refused to stand up to the bully, while in most shows this would be the breaking point for characters. However, when Adam tries giving the shark his lunch early, he slips on some mayo and smacks the shark's snout by accident. This makes Adam the new school bully, making everyone in the school fear him. The start of the episode would make you think that he would enjoy being on top of the pecking order, but no. Adam resents the role and goes to work things out with the old bully. I'm not gonna hurt you. I just want to talk. Words can hurt too. In a really weird twist, the episode tries making you sympathetic for the bully. This is no longer about returning things back to the status quo just for the sake of it. Now it's about helping this bully get his status back because bullying others makes him happy. Yeah, I'm perfectly happy not being a bully anymore. So Adam tricks the bully into smacking him, he takes the fall, and everyone fears the shark once more. No lesson was learned, in fact, if anything, this episode did the exact opposite of what a moral should be. If you try looking for a moral here, all you get is that it's okay to let others bully you because it makes them happy. 
It's kind of refreshing to have a bully episode in a kids show end on that rather than the overused tropes. But I think that the show's strong suit isn't about what you take away from the episode, but rather the ride from point A to point B. The episode's logic does feel random because it tries subverting your expectations for the plot. And in a sense, that is a good thing. It keeps you guessing as for what could happen next, and it makes watching the show fun. It's no amazing show by any means, but it's definitely leagues above shows like Squirrel Boy and the Crap Twins. But even keeping in mind how it aims to subvert your expectations, I don't think Mr. Enter would change his mind about the show. And that's fine, we all have different tastes in cartoons, and my tolerance for goofy shows like this is far higher than his. I was someone who actually liked Fanboy and Chum Chum, so that should show how high of a tolerance I have for cartoons like this. I do want to thank Mr. Enter for his review on My Gym Partners and Monkey, as it actually gave me an interesting topic to talk about for the show. If you haven't already, then be sure to check out his channel and see some of his reviews yourself. Anyways, thank you guys for watching this video, be sure to subscribe to help support future content on this channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.